welcome to the week that was TIOL's weekly news roundup. Let's have a quick look at the major policy changes, legal and tax news coverage this week before moving on to the news in detail. The cabinet has approved expenditure of rupees 33000 crore for the redevelopment of seven government colonies in Delhi through the National Building Construction Corporation and the CPWD. To meet the housing shortage for central government employees about 13,000 units with a built-up area of 20 lakh square meters shall be added to the existing colonies in Sarojini Nagar, Netaji Nagar, Nauroji Nagar, Kasturba Nagar, Tyagraj Nagar, Srinivaspuri and Mohammadpur. The project shall be completed in five years. Providing clarity on the new auditor rotation rules, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has stated the companies may retain their same auditor till their 2017 annual general meeting, which usually takes place in September. The next time you travel by air, see the reverse of your boarding pass to get information about the government's domestic black money scheme. The Income Tax Department has tied up with seven airlines including Air India and Air Asia to publicize its Income Tax Declaration Scheme 2016 with effect from July 15 up to September 30th. The Apex Court has given the centre four weeks to prepare an action plan to clamp down against chit funds which have cheated thousands of investors. A regulatory mechanism for such illegal deposit and collective investment schemes shall be prepared on the basis of SEBI recommendations made in 2012. To soften the shock of Brexit, Britain has proposed to cut the corporate tax rate to less than 15% as against the average tax rate of 25% among developed nations. The target date is yet to be announced. Will the European Union follow? Now for the news in detail. The cabinet reshuffle shows the government working as a conglomerate. The cabinet reshuffle this week had one clear message, perform or perish. A few days after the month-end performance review of all ministries done on June 30th, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi reshuffled the portfolios of his key ministers, sacked five ministers of state and inducted 19 new faces while keeping the cabinet tight, close-knit and powerful. Teamwork, loyalty and performance were rewarded with responsibility and key portfolios. Inviting unnecessary controversy and bad press was punished. Here are some of the key changes. The move of Smriti Irani from HRD to textiles was a shocker. But the performance audit report rated the HRD ministry low on liberalization and reforms. Anand Kumar, having proved his capability as an effective negotiator, was made the new parliamentary affairs minister. Perhaps he could be the key to ensure the passage of the goods and services tax constitution amendment. Prakash Javarekar was moved from environment to HRD and also promoted to cabinet rank. Minister of State Jayant Sinha was moved as second-in-command to the Civil Aviation Minister Ashok Gajapati Raju. Former Karnataka Chief Minister D.V. Sadhanan Gauda was moved to Statistics and Programme Implementation, while Ravi Shankar Prasad has taken on the Law and Justice Portfolio. Manoj Sinha given independent charge of the Communications Portfolio. Economic sectors were left untouched. Does this make the government better prepared for India's challenges and the assembly polls in early 2017? Corporate reporting requirements have been simplified. The government has simplified and liberalized the salary reporting requirements for companies as required to be made in the director's report for the registrar of companies. Under the Companies Appointment and Remuneration of Managerial Personal Amendment Rules 2014, companies now only need to disclose salaries of its top 10 paid employees and those earning more than Rs 1 crore per annum, increased from the earlier benchmark of Rs 60 lakh. For part-time employees, the threshold for reporting has been increased from Rs 5 lakh per month to 8.5 lakh a month. 
listed companies have also been exempted from justifying any increase in remuneration of management personnel with better company performance. Can any court convict a dead man? In a landmark decision, the Supreme Court has held that no proceedings may be allowed against a dead man as it is a gross miscarriage of justice and set aside the order for the attachment of his assets. The trial court and the Andhra Pradesh High Court had convicted a government official of owning assets disproportionate to his known sources of income and even allowed the attachment of assets. The Supreme Court bench of Justices S.A. Bobre and Amitav Roy were hearing a petition by the family stating that the trial court had passed the order of conviction two years after the death of the government official. The state government felt that under the Criminal Procedure Court, government agencies were not barred from attaching the property often accused in case of abatement of proceedings due to death. The Supreme Court concluded that when the law requires attachment orders to be withdrawn upon acquittal, it also meant such orders must be withdrawn when prosecution cannot result in a conviction due to the death of the accused. Only one startup was found eligible for tax benefits. Kanpur based Burak Technologies was the only one startup company out of 571 applicants which was found eligible for the three year tax benefits under round two of the inter ministerial board meeting under the Startup India initiative. As per the status report by the Ministry of Commerce, only 12 applicants met the eligibility condition of having been incorporated after April 2016 and only 7 applicants had furnished all the documents as required by the Inter-Ministerial Board. Applicants have been guided on submitting the missing documents. High Courts are now going to be renamed. The judiciary distanced itself from politics when cities changed their names. Bombay became Mumbai, Calcutta was renamed Kolkata while Madras became Chennai. But high courts named after the city retained their names. There was no central law to facilitate the name change. But now the cabinet has approved the introduction of the High Court Alteration of Names Bill 2016 in Parliament. This bill sh shall facilitate the change in name. The High Courts of Bombay, Madras and Calcutta may be renamed as the High Courts of Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata to fulfill the wishes of the state government and the people. Get set to pay pollution tax on private diesel vehicles. To curb air pollution, the Environment Pollution Control Authority has proposed to the Supreme Court the introduction of a new pollution tax on private diesel cars. This tax to undo the benefit of cheaper diesel fuel will be based on diesel engine capacity and range between 10% and 25% of the vehicle cost. Intent to control the growing use of diesel cars, the proposed pollution tax is in addition to the voluntary deposit of 1% environment cess suggested by car makers for lifting the epic score ban on sale of big diesel vehicles in the capital. A vehicle scrapping policy may soon be introduced. To reduce pollution and oil imports, the government will soon provide tax incentives to scrap fuel guzzlers of vehicles more than 11 years old. The Ministry of Road Transport and Highways has proposed a vehicle scrapping policy to the Finance Ministry. Those surrendering their old vehicles purchased before March 2005 may receive tax rebate on the cost of the new vehicle. The Voluntary Vehicle Fleet Modernization Plan could well remove 28 million vehicles from Indian roads, thereby significantly reducing oil consumption and vehicular emission. Do we see car makers smiling about the boost in sales? Where will transport businesses invest? One more report has rated India and China as the most popular destinations for investment by the transport sector, followed by the US. The 7th Norton Rose Fulbright Transport Survey, titled The Way Ahead, reveals that global recession shall pose the greatest threat 
to the transport industry while consolidation shall be the most important strategy of transport businesses over next 12 months. Bank debt is expected to be the main source of funding for the transport industry in the next two years. <laughs> Delhi's excise officials face a new occupational hazard from the liquor mafia. There was an unexpected outcome when Delhi's understaffed excise department doubled the daily target of seizures of smuggled liquor bottles. Teams of excise officials working overtime used to threats are now also facing attacks from a violent liquor mafia, resulting in multiple fractures and serious injuries to its officials. An excise official, Sandeep Sharon, was attacked by the liquor mafia recently when he and his team stopped the driver of the suspected vehicle. As the officials were recovering the bottles, the driver accelerated, hitting Sharon, who was taken to a nearby hospital with a fractured skull and a broken collarbone. At present, Delhi's excise department has only 45 excise officials working in nine teams with each team having a seizure target of 4,000 bottles per month. Targets are decided by senior officials on the basis of previous smuggling information and data. On this note, we conclude this bulletin of the week that was. Thank you for watching. You may write to us at editor at tiol.in. Have a great weekend ahead.